Hi, this is Alon from the Cytrinity SDK team. In this video I'll demonstrate how easy yet powerful it is to manage your content, static and dynamic modules with Cytrinity's desktop application, also known as Lightning. First thing you want to do on your Cytrinity backend is go to Administration, Modules and Services, make sure that your DAM, Digital Asset Management module, is installed and active. Then open the Cytrinity desktop application. I have it here. Make sure that it's connected with your Cytrinity instance. I can see here that my application is online. If I click Manage Sites, I can see the Cytrinity sites which are being managed by this application. Um, the one that I'm running on is um, my IIS on localhost. If I click the site, I can manage the credentials of the user which is used by this desktop application. It better be a user other than your default administrator, uh, otherwise your default administrator gets logged out of your browser every time you use the desktop application. Let's start with the standard static modules which are shipped by default with Sitefinity. I'll go to the back end again. Under content I'll go to news. Now before I open my pre-created news item I'll go to the custom field section and I can see that I've pre-created a custom field for news called first published. So let's go back to news and open my news item. I see the title and content and all the standard news fields. And if I scroll down I can see my custom field here populated. Let's close this and go back to my desktop application. Not only does the Cytrinity desktop application give me full control over modules in terms of create, read, update and delete operations, I also have advanced editing features as we will see in a moment. To manage my existing content items I'll go to uh, open from site and here I'll go to news. I can see my news item here. I can uh, delete it by clicking this icon of the bin. I can edit it by clicking title or I can create a new item by clicking create new news item. Let's open the item here in the editor and I get a full-blown content editor. I see all the news fields if I scroll down. I have the title which I can update. I can also access my custom field here and update it as I need. The content editor as I just mentioned is a full-blown rich text editor which gives me all the options that I need including for example embedding images. So if I just click the image button. I can select images from the Sitefinity instance if there are any uploaded to the libraries or I can select image from this computer and click browse, select an image and continue. And the image is not only inserted into the editor, it's also uploaded to Sitefinity's libraries. Now when I'm done editing I can either publish my item, save it as draft, save it locally which means it's not being pushed to Sitefinity just yet or just close it and discard my changes. Let's publish the item. The item is published, now I can close it and go back to the Sitefinity's backend, click the item, I can see the embedded image and scrolling down I can see my custom field has also been updated. One option which I just covered, if I just create a new news item by clicking the create button Let's fill some demo text. Now if I don't want to push this item to Sitefinity, I can click Save Locally and then close it. Now if I click Dashboard on the Sitefinity desktop application, I can see that I have the server items as well as local items which are being edited on the application itself. So I can go back to my local items, not just server items, edit them and when I'm ready I can push them to Sitefinity to get published. So go back to the Sitefinity backend, let's go back to the news grid and refresh it and here's my new item added and published. Another demo of Sitefinity's standard content, let's go back to the Sitefinity desktop application this time I'll click the create new item in the sidebar and let's create an event as I can expect, I have my event editor, again title and content and all the other event fields. This event will be the Independence Day 
of Malta, uh, which was independent from the United Kingdom in 1964. And since then, it's a recurring event. Here on the sidebar, I have access to my event properties. I can see the start and end date, and I can also click more details, and I get more options for the event times. For example, I can set the event's recurrence. This event is a yearly event, which recurs a full day every September 21st. Let's start from, let's go back to the 60s. 1964, September 21st, and let's give it a repetition recurrence up to 100 years. Let's hope it continues, but for now, let's save this, and for the sake of demos, let's publish this event. Let's go back to Sitefinity's backend. Under Content, I'll go to Events. Here is my event with all its properties. If I open it, of course, I can see the title and content, and I can see the event recurrence, just as I've set it very easily from the Sitefinity desktop application. Next, I'll go to content and blogs. Here I have two blogs, but they are managed on two separate providers. I've added another blog provider. I have my default blogs, which is my default provider, which is shipped with Sitefinity, and I've added manually another blogs provider, which is called Lightning Blogs, and here I have one blog called Lightning Blog. Currently, none of the blogs have any posts. Going back to the Sitefinity's desktop application, let's close this event, and let's create a blog post. Let's call it Lightning Post. Let's just fill some demo content. And here I can choose which blog to attach my post to. And I can see both blogs from both providers. So I can actually access my content items and manage multiple providers very easily Let's attach this post to the Lightning blog, which is on my secondary provider, and publish it. Now let's go to the back end and go to the Lightning blog's provider. I can see the Lightning blog now has one post. Of course, I can get its content, just as I would expect. And let's go back. So far, so good with Sitefinity's static modules. Under Administration, I'll go now to Module Builder and I'll show that I've actually created a dynamic module called Authors. If I click it, I'll see that it's actually a, a hierarchical module covering authors and books. The authors have three fields, title, year of birth, and location, which is a geographic location. So let's go back and under Content, Authors, we can see that I've created two records already for Charles Dickens and J.R.R. Tolkien. I'll click Actions and Properties, for example, for Charles Dickens. I can see the title, which is actually the author's name, his year of birth, and down here I can see the location, which is actually represented by a series of location fields and a map from Google. Let's go back up. If I click the author, I'll get the list of books, and of course each book with its properties. So let's go back to the Sitefinity desktop application. Let's close this post. Let's go to Open from Site. Actually, I can see that apart from Sitefinity standard modules, dynamic modules are also manageable here. So I'll just click Authors and we'll get our list of authors. For example, let's click now the properties of J.R.R. Tolkien. We can see the title, which is the author's name. We can see the year of birth field, and we even have the location, in which case if I click change, we get a full-blown location editor with coordinates and a map. Let's go back and click J.R.R. Tolkien. We'll see the list of books. Um, as I can see, I've missed one of the books from the Lord of the Rings series, oh, because we have the Fellowship of the Ring and the Two Towers. But let's add another record just for the record. This one will be The Return of the King. 
which was published in 1955. Let's publish it. And let's go back in the back end, click the author, we'll get the up to date list of books. So this was a quick demo of some of the key features of content management through Sitefinity's desktop application. We saw how easy it is to manage content items of both static modules with static and dynamic fields, as well as dynamic modules. We saw the powerful editors, features, locations, multiple providers, and offline content management.